Is let's start here with Reed Hastings' plan for uh, worldwide video domination. What have he and Netflix set out to do? Sure. So if you listen to Reed Hastings' talk, Reed founded uh, Netflix in 1997, so about 20 years ago. He was a much younger man. Uh, we were much younger men. And over that time, over the past 20 years, he has watched as some of these big internet giants or some of these big tech companies have, have used the proliferation of the internet to build the biggest companies in the world. Google with search, Facebook with social networking, so on and so forth, Amazon with, with e-commerce. And Hastings is kind of of that set. He's not a Hollywood guy. He sits on the board of Facebook. He's a, an entrepreneur who started a couple different companies. And he believes that the future of television is on the internet. And he wants Netflix to be the primary and, if possible, dominant network in that area. And that means not just being successful in the US, which Netflix already is, but being successful everywhere, or, or at least in a lot of different countries around the world. So why did, they, uh, why did Netflix pick Brazil as the place to perfect what you write as the first uh, draft of its international playbook? What does that country offer and how do the challenges there sort of play out around the world? Are they replicated in other countries, other markets that Netflix hopes to get into? Yeah, so Netflix's international expansion started after going to Canada, which, which hardly counts. They went to Latin America in 2011, 43 countries at once. So a lot of that was because it's close, it's almost all one language, Brazil being the, the one big exception, and there's a heavy appetite for kind of Hollywood content. Now, Brazil is the biggest, mar the biggest market in Latin America by a lot. It accounts for pretty much a third of the population in the region. It's one of the biggest economies, if not the biggest in the region. And it is unique in that it's got this language, Portuguese, which is only spoken in a few territories. So if they could succeed in Brazil, it was a good arbiter of, or a good sign of success for all these other places. Now, why Brazil is also then kind of a, a good case study, if you will, for, for what's happening around the world is that it has a lot of the traits that Netflix and a lot of the hurdles that Netflix will encounter in, in, in markets everywhere, including some of the biggest developing markets. You know, Brazil, though it has a very large economy, is still a developing country where most of the people would be considered poor by American standards. Um, the infrastructure was, was sh is, sh is shoddy, particularly five years ago. Um, people couldn't use credit cards. Access to internet is limited in some places. And so Netflix, is, and by figuring out how to tackle Brazil, Netflix learned a lot of things that it's applying everywhere else. This is not to say that the market in Indonesia or India is going to be the same as Brazil, but mm. generally speaking, a lot of those hurdles are the same. Lucas, you mentioned that the internet was shoddy uh, in Brazil. Obviously, the internet, the, the lifeline here uh, for Netflix. How did the company work to correct that to make the infrastructure there uh, more vital, more robust, so that the service would work as well as they wanted to? Sure. Some of it is what Netflix did, where they have this, this program called Open Connect, where they supply servers to a lot of the telecommunications providers so that the data with your video uh, doesn't have to ping, say, from somewhere in rural Brazil to Miami back to Brazil. It can all be kind of the, the distance that it has to travel and the quality of the stream is going to be higher. And some of it is really outside of Netflix's control, but that they see happening inevitably. You have the big internet providers, telecommunications companies, wanting to spread internet far and wide because it's good for their business. Uh, so if, you, if they can get more people on the internet using data, they make mm. more money. Netflix sees that happening and they're just there to kind of the reap the benefits. Very quickly here, they're making these shows. They spent an extraordinary amount of money on programming, I think half a billion dollars last year, uh, if not more. Is the goal here to make a show in Brazil that will appeal, yes, to Brazilians, but also uh, to customers in the U.S., in Canada, around the world? Yeah, their hope is that a show like 3%, which was their first Brazilian original, will be popular not just in Brazil, but everywhere. And then they have original programs like Anarcos, like House of Cards, like The Crown, mm -hmm. that they have a good feeling will be popular in the US or the UK, but they really want to be global shows. You know, they have a belief that there's, you, as long as you offer a wide or a diverse enough range of shows, you'll have yep. something for everyone, everywhere.